it feeds on the evil that seeps out during conversations between people. Welcome, both new and returning managers, to the records department. Here, as part of my responsibilities as department captain, I have prepared audio logs on a variety of subjects to best assist you in your managerial duties. Today, we'll be discussing the first abnormality they called this branch home, O0303, the third O-type abnormality listed in the religious subclass. One sin and hundreds of good deeds, or more commonly referred to as simply one sin. One sin's appearance is that of a large levitating iron cross combined with a massive human skull. It floats two meters above the ground, and the cross is itself two meters tall and two meters wide. Additionally, a faint glowing light is exuded from the skull, which is a crown of thorns tightly bound around its temple. One sin has a risk level of Zayim, and is considered to be one of the safest and arguably more beneficial abnormalities this facility possesses. Findings state that whenever an employee worked on it and experienced 80% or greater work efficacy, they received benediction, restoring their mental state and leaving them refreshed. Additionally, following incidents of 100% work efficacy, all agents in the control department received this benediction at once, lowering mental corruption levels even amongst those otherwise occupied by work. When interacting with one sin, it has been determined that it responds best when individuals confess to the abnormality. By speaking with it, particularly in discussion of secrets, a greater level of work efficacy was found. Attempting to ask it questions and learn about its nature were nearly as effective in eliciting positive enkephalin, whereas treating it as an animal or trying to feed it resulted in less effective work. Additionally, the greater the physical strength of the employee while attempting any instinct work, the worse performance became. Lastly, attempting to suppress or harm one's sin seemed the least effective, especially amongst employees with a strong sense of justice. But it is worth noting that all four methods of work differ in efficacy by only small amounts. Due to this, it may be valuable to train new employees' sense of justice on one's sin, if only because abnormalities that can safely be repressed at low levels are often harder to find. However, as a greater number of positive enkephalin boxes are needed each day, and one sin produces so few with each work order, be wary of becoming over-reliant on it for training, as ordeals are often wont to appear the longer the days go on. It is worth noting that there appear to be notes regarding a fifth type of work that is situationally available. These notes pertain to a link between one sin and a pair of other abnormalities, O0145, also known as the Plague Doctor, and T0346, White Knight. However, the scope and length of those notes necessitate their own logs, and as such will not be explained here. Please see the abnormality logs for those entities for further information. One sin does not possess a Clifot counter, and as such has no Clifot factors you need to worry about, manager. It's a non-escaping entity, only adding to the relative harmlessness of this abnormality. But before we continue to the EGO section, I will now begin reading from the abnormality log in its entirety. A silent abnormality that understands the conflict between good and evil. Its empty eye sockets stare at all those who encounter it. A giant skull that is attached to a cross, it wears a crown of thorns. It floats about two meters above the ground. While its appearance is bizarre, it is rare to record an incident of violence against employees involving this abnormality. It feeds on the evil that seeps out during conversations between people. The assigned employee must kneel before it, standing appears to be acceptable, and present their evil by confessing their sins to it. The way it feeds is unknown. The following is an excerpt from the experiment records. We have cataloged the sins a person can commit into three levels. Level 1. A small lie or action that goes unnoticed or can be shared in jest. Level 2. Sins that are more serious and only shared with the closest of friends. And level 3. Sins so profound that they cannot be shared with anyone. These will be taken to the grave. Employee has been assigned to confess a level 1 sin. Energy production via the abnormality increased by 12%. Employee was assigned to confess a level 2 sin. Energy production via the abnormality increased by 15%. We assigned employee to confess a level 3 sin. One minute and 48 seconds after the employee was sent in, a bright flash of light was seen. The light was so bright that it could be seen outside of the containment unit. Immediately following the light, 
there was a facility-wide power outage. The phenomenon lasted for two hours. Employee lost six years of their memory. Further experiments were canceled. Scientific ethics decree that all footage of those who participate in the experiments is to be kept sealed. However, the incident has left us no choice but to review the footage of the containment unit. So, this happened during at around 4 p.m. Anyways, there was a railway about 20 minutes from my house. Some of my good friends and I decided to dress as forest animals. One of us chose to go as a deer. It was a crude costume. It could hardly be called one, to be honest. Just a pair of clumsily made antlers and a dark outfit with some deer-like spots on it. I don't know how our dear friend wandered into the woods. We didn't even notice he was missing for maybe an hour. We searched for him and finally found him in some bushes. We called out his name, and I'm not sure if it was from relief or finally finding us or what, but he started sprinting towards us. And that's when we heard it. Bang. 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 When I came to my senses, I saw his blood splattered all the way to my feet. After that, not one of us dressed up as an animal ever again. That's all. By the way, is this really supposed to be work? Observation log number four underscore four three five. Its eye sockets are empty. It is a skull after all, but I doubt it's blind. It certainly has its gaze fixed on me and I can somehow feel that it's listening to me. Confessing to it does lighten my heart, admittedly. Afterwards, we investigated the incidents in the employee's hometown to get a better picture. We learned that a boy named Justin was shot and killed in a deer costume by hunters during hunting season. Unlike the employee's confession, Justin was repeatedly bullied by other kids. Witnesses said they heard the kids shout, Run, Justin, run! right before the gunshot. After the incident, the kids at the scene moved out of town, and deer hunting was banned in the area. Excerpt from Abnormality Research Log X-392 Honestly, you can't expect all of our employees to give honest confessions to that skull. Around every 1 in 10 employees will tend to say something that is not completely true. It's a bit different from a lie. You can say that it's a subconscious excuse that they make. The historic perspectives to justify their actions, even though they are aware that they should be telling the truth. Once this happens, the confession is no longer truly a confession. Yes, I am talking about you trying to justify your tardiness for five minutes now. And thus concludes the abnormality log. Moving on now to the EGO section. The equipment has been codenamed Penitence. The weapon, armor, and gift all share this name. The EGO weapon for one sin takes the appearance of a large club shaped like a cross, clearly reminiscent of the abnormality's appearance with a skull motif at the center point of the cross. When struck, it seems to have the effect of bypassing the flesh entirely, directly striking at the mind instead. This works well against abnormalities possessing of tougher-than-average flesh, but has the added benefit that it seems to purify panicking or terrified employees. When grasped wholly by insanity, it seems that the touch of a weapon of white can often restore their minds, assuming they live long enough to be restored. It is this humble captain's recommendation, however, manager that you remember the relative value of a single panicked employee versus the impact their madness could have across the entire facility. You've been granted execution bullets for a reason, after all. Ah, forgive me my words. I could stand to raise my prudence, it seems. Moving on, I will now read the notes on penitence left to us by our sister department, Extraction. To know means to understand. We successfully extracted the archetype and materialized it, and the observer reshaped it into a weapon. This is why we highly regarded the act of observation. The eye sockets of the hollow skull stare into sins, and the crown of thorns casts blame. Those who are willing to spill blood for the greater good will be readily given approval for its use. Though this weapon is not as strong as other EGO weapons in our possession, it provides psychological comfort to the wielder. However, it is useless to those who do not know justice. End quote. Those with a strong sense of justice will find solace in retribution, it seems. As for the armor that was extracted, it is the appearance of a red and black padded uniform. It possesses markedly greater resistance to all damage compared to the suits offered to newly hired agents, 
particularly against black erosive type attacks. Here are the notes from the extraction department. Conventional firearms were ineffective against abnormalities. Using them was as futile as cutting water with a knife. That was when we asked ourselves, if abnormalities are materialized from the unconsciousness, it may be possible to extract a piece of it back from them and turn it into a weapon. Results varied depending on the observer. The crown of thorns will sometimes protect the wielder's soul. The thorns may momentarily hurt as they anchor your soul to reality. The suit will be no better than rags to those who have no sense of guilt." End quote. To translate, those who receive physical damage, either through trauma or erosion, will often find their mental health restored through the pain, a useful tool, particularly against erosive attacks that can harm the mind as much as the body. Thus concludes the official Lobotomy Corporation Abnormality Report for O0303. One sin and hundreds of good deeds. However, with the conclusion of the official report, I cannot help but add my own suppositions, informal as they may be. Perhaps these errant thoughts of mine could motivate new managers to research all sorts of things. It is claimed that this is the first abnormality that was received here at our main branch, and I can't help but wonder if there is some greater symbolism behind that. As part of my job preparing these logs, I have been made aware of the TT2 protocol, though I am not exempt from its effects. Why is this abnormality always the one that remains? No matter what, it is always here, observing us. Perhaps it recognizes a greater sin than I could even begin to understand. A sin so integral to the Lobotomy Corporation that no number of good deeds could wash it away. I will stop my suppositions there. If I continue along this line of thought any longer, I may find myself reassigned from this work to something less stimulating. Hopefully my imprudence does not anger Angela. Until next time, I wish you the best of luck, manager. All of us here in the Twelfth Wing shall stand behind you and live by our adage. Face the fear. Build the future.